Good morning, everybody, and welcome to an aerial view of the great Masai Mara. We are coming to you from the balloon. I currently am not actually sitting in the balloon, so I am seeing this fresh as you are. Jean Dre is on camera. My name is James Henry. This is completely live and interactive, so if you would like to send us any questions, please feel free to do so. Do in the comments section of this Facebook Live broadcast. And for the next 45 minutes, what we're going to be doing is going gently floating over the Mara as dawn breaks. Is it not absolutely spectacular? I think it is absolutely spectacular. There, the eastern horizon, you can see. Good morning, Cheryl Butler, Sariti. Uh, lots of people coming to have a look here as we watch dawn breaking from the air. Now, the balloon is following a path from the north of the Mara down towards the south. Uh, the wind tends to blow, I think, northeast towards the southwest during the course of the morning. We seem to have a little bit of picture break up there, a couple of colour bars, <laughs> a few technical glitches, but don't worry about that. We will be back and we will try and get Jamie's out on the ground. There, we're now floating over the Mara River with some hippo pop to my uh, mother and calf, it looks like. Oh, that is fantastic. And they're just floating down what is a pretty empty Mara River at this stage. Unfortunately, it would seem... Uh, well, that the, the river is still suffering the effects of the drought. Now, I know that it does keep flashing in and out, so please bear with us. This is our very first broadcast from the air, and so we're hoping to fix any technical glitches that there are. We're sure we will. We will also, hopefully, be going to Jamie's feed. She is on the ground, and she can see Jean Dre's balloon. There he is, and you can see he's quite low down, so those calabar problems should lift or disappear as soon as he gets pretty much above the tree line. So that is Jamie's view. She is sitting on the ground in a southwesterly direction, I think, from where the balloon is. Time to time, and we apologize for that. Vera, I'm not in the balloon. Um, I am sitting... <laughs> you won't believe where I'm sitting. We're obviously still setting up here in the Mara. I'm sitting outside what will be our studio with a... Uh, monitor perched upon a camping chair and I'm sitting outside with Egbert stopping people walking past behind me. There we have the balloon feedback and a gorgeous, oh and some colour bars and now we've, got, now we've got, you see the colour bars match very nicely of course the colour of the balloon but there is Jean Dre, he is, he is now, well that's not him on fire, that is the burner of the balloons heating the, trying to get a bit of height. There we have a beautiful picture now. Chandra panning left to right over the Masai Mara. Now, we use the terms Masai Mara and Mara Triangle interchangeably, and that's because they are part of the same reserve or same ecosystem, but they're different sides of the river. So the western side of the river, uh, where that picture where Jamie's coming from now, is the Mara Triangle, and the other side of the river is what is more commonly known as the Masai Mara. They're all part of the same ecosystem. They all receive the millions of wildebeest that come popping through here during the course of the migration. Um, lots of you sending through very nice comments. Thank you very much for those. Little one, Judith, Scott, Fryard. Lots of you having a look at our first aerial, um, <laughs> sometimes colour bar feed from the Mara. I'm now looking at Jandre's feed coming over the riverine forests that fringe the river. And I guess that's an unusual view because, of course, when we are driving... It's normally through the open grassland areas, and so that's, I mean, that's absolutely fine, clearly, but, sorry, I was just looking at a message, <laughs> playing with a few things here. Right, so there are the grasslands, but you can see that the vegetation along the rivers is that much thicker, and that's, of course, because there's that much water. Uh, the soil is slightly different. You'll find that over the course of millions of years, there's been a huge build-up of nutrients and clay along the rivers that will hold water and nutrients, and that's more suitable, of course, for the big trees. That's pretty advanced or pretty climax forest, that, I must say. It's not, um, it's much more... 
it's much more mature. It looks like a proper sort of mature forest as opposed to a woodland that we get perhaps down in South Africa, in the Sabi sand, where most of you are very familiar with us. Um, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, you ought to know how my holiday was. Well, I, I'm not going to tell you about that right now. We're going to rather look at this balloon feed right now. And hopefully Jandre will be able to spot something in those woodlands that we wouldn't normally be able to do. If you have just joined us, we are now floating in a balloon over the Masai Mara. Jamie is on the ground alternatively looking at Jandre and the sunrise and the lions that she's sitting with. Jandre is the cameraman. He is in the balloon right now. I'm rather jealous of him. I'd love to be talking to you from the actual balloon, but I'm not at this stage. We will, of course, get to that stage where we can do that. But right now, I'm sitting on a rather cold uh, concrete wall, staring at a screen. But that's quite fun. We just have to make sure that everybody walks quietly when they come past where I am, because... <laughs> There's gravel standing here, so I'm good, wishing good morning to Steph. Uh, Steph comes in and enjoys this feed with us over the Mara. Righty, let's get a couple more questions. You can send us any questions you like on the comment section of the Facebook Live broadcast. I'll get to them as f soon as I can. There we go. We seem to be clearing now the river and moving out more into the grasslands. Uh, we'll now get a look at the sun from Jandri. It's just about to pop up. You can see that everything is still bathed in shadow because the sun is not quite up just yet. This is just fantastic stuff. We had a beautiful, beautiful evening last night with some wind and a couple of lightning storms around the place and we wondered if we'd get a good dawn this morning and we certainly have and the picture that you can see there quite nicely mirrors the picture that I can see from where I'm sitting down through our studio window where I can see the great orb of the sun just popping up over to the far east there and they're quite low down now looking for animals. There we have, oh how magnificent, a black rhinoceros. Isn't that fantastic? That is gorgeous. He is quite amazed to be seeing Jandre this morning. He has of course seen balloons many, many times, but the sight of Jandre has startled him to the point that he's decided to get up. Um, he, of course, interestingly, is a browsing creature, so what he's doing in amongst the early grasslands there, early morning, I'm not really sure, perhaps he's just enjoying the sunrise like the rest of us. So that is a black rhino, uh, the most or one of the most endangered subspecies of the black rhino. Gorgeous. You can see that thick verdant grass there, it's just spectacular stuff. Um, thank you. Ewan Shield Maiden. Ewan Shield Maiden, what a name, that's fantastic. You said we'll be, be using this balloon in the TV shows. We will hopefully, I mean that's why we're doing all these tests, we're hoping that we'll be able to do that. Uh, Jamie Peterson, you want to know what's been the hardest change since I arrived here? Well, sitting on this concrete block, but other than that it's been absolutely fantastic. Michelle, you say it's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. We're just getting all of these um, adjectives coming through. Awesome, stunning. And now, many of you have noticed the rhino. And still, you can see everything still bathed in shadow. We have yet to have the sun peep up over the woodlands. And when it does, of course, you're going to get a spectacular picture of the colours that the Mara has to offer. That's Jamie's view there. She's watching the balloon floating gently along. You can see it's not very high up at all. There's some elephants between the balloon, the trees, and Jamie. They are also watching the balloon go by. They don't seem to be quite as, um, well, interested in Jandro's haircut as the rhino was. There we are now heading for the trees. Now, this river bends back on itself hundreds of times between the northern sections of its, uh, where it comes into the Mara and where it then crosses into the Serengeti of Tanzania. 
it bends back on itself hundreds of times. And so you can go in a straight line, go out into the grassland and then come back onto the one of the bends of the river and that's exactly what's going on here. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, a couple of colour bars there. We'll go back to watching where they are there. There are the elephants. And you can see they've gained a lot more height now. Look at the different colours. You can see the sun just starting now to touch the tops of the trees. And suddenly, what was a fairly sort of dull greenish colour is now morphing into hundreds of different green colours. There it is. That is somebody taking pictures. I don't know who that is. There could well be guests in the balloon with Jandri. There, the sun has come up. Isn't that just too wonderful? I'm very jealous of Jean-Dri, I must say. I think he's going to be grinning from ear to ear. There you can see one of the bends of the river. That's quite nice there. Um, just off to the right-hand side there, you saw the bend in the river, and you saw where the grass met the woodland. Oh, what have we got there? Elephants in amongst the woodland. I think they spend a lot of their time midday and probably the evenings in these woodland areas eating the trees. Certainly yesterday, as it started to get hot, there were lots of herds of elephants moving out of the grasslands into those woodland or riverine forested areas. Oh, that's gorgeous. That really is very nice. I think you should all send me through perhaps a one-worder into the comments section here uh, with an adjective of what it makes you feel like. So what does it make you feel like to look at the Mara from the air like this? Santiago, you said amazing. Jessica, you're all saying good morning. Thank you very much for all of your greetings. That is Jamie's picture again. It looked like a starling of some sort flying in between the balloon and the trees and the elephant and the great sky beyond. I think the lions are probably still there. And you're just going to see, like I say, the colours start to change. Now, we're going to be on this broadcast probably for the next, well, I don't know, 45 minutes until they land. So, don't worry, it's not going to end quickly. You can retrieve yourself a cup of whatever it is and just enjoy as we float very gently across the Mara. Terry Wilson, you say breathtaking. That it certainly is. And Aok, you say soaring. And Valerie, you say blessed. Yes, absolutely. Aren't we blessed? Betty, you say it's extraordinary. Absolutely. Angie Schwartz, you say serenity. It's much breathtaking. Peaceful. Yes, it is. And, you know, soon we'll be able to get some sound from there too. And... What that will give us, of course, is just that floating... It'll really amplify the floating sensation that we're getting now. This is, like I say, if you have just joined us, our very first foray into live balloon broadcasting. And we're having a wonderful time doing it and hoping that you are enjoying it with us too. Any comments you'd like, just put them in the comments section of the broadcast. And Magda, you say this makes you feel humble. Absolutely, it makes me feel rather the same. Janet, you say sad. You've been just home from Africa, less than 24 hours, and ready to return. <laughs> Sorry about that, Janet. John, that makes you feel fat. Fabtabulous, really. Well, there we go. Amazingly spectacular. James, I have, you have the best job in the world. Thank you, Michael. Yes, I do have a wonderful job, indeed. Um, right now, Jean-Dre's job is... Uh, slightly more spectacular. He's actually the one up there. So if you are wondering how we're doing this, John Dre is in the balloon and I am back at the studio, well, the beginnings of the studio, watching Jean Dre's efforts and narrating them to you. I can actually see him, believe it or not. I can see his balloon from where I'm sitting here in the studio through the window. which makes me feel even more jealous. Um, and then we're also showing you every so often shots from Jamie's vehicle. She is sitting sort of southwest of him. And there's Jamie's vehicle there. 
she's watching lions playing on the road. Now this is the Angama Pride and Jamie went out very early this morning and while we saw these seven cubs or the seven cubs, the bigger ones yesterday, I think ranging between three and six months, she managed to find three tiny, tiny ones, the newest ones, all members of the Angama Pride this morning. So hang on with them and we'll perhaps if they make another, re I think they've gone away, I think they've been taken into hiding again by their mum but we spent a lovely time with them very early this morning that looks like a small herd of buffalo to me that John is now looking at and you can see again obviously this balloon travels in a straight line it is purely at the mercy of whichever way the breeze is blowing and so you can see it is going from the top or from the um, sort of grasslands and then up over the river and then down back into the grasslands and that just gives you an idea of how much the river bends there now to the top right of your picture we've got <laughs> another balloon floating along I've seen probably five balloons in total at one stage going along here and so there are quite a few of them and I think it really doesn't affect the animals at all it's a wonderful way for the animals to be viewed from above and very quietly and very peacefully and very serenely. Early you say really very beautiful. Yes, indeed it is. Now, Catherine, you're just commenting on the colours and the grasses. Yes, and those colours are going to become much more amplified as the light breaks over the top of the trees and starts to sort of cast its warming light onto those grasses. That looks to me like some sort of egret, perhaps, or a stork. I'm afraid I can't tell from this distance. Perhaps a stork, the way it's flying. Now, that's the Ulo Lolo escarpment, as far as I can tell. And as we pan around there, you should, I think, we're probably just further to the right of that picture. Up on top there somewhere. jean looks like he's might be landing this balloon uh, the other side of the river which should be quite interesting he may be there for some time oh and Rita you said that you did this when you visited the Mara well I'd, be, I'd love to know how your experience was I imagine it was just spectacular no. and any questions please send them through like I say, I know many of you are dropping us comments saying how stunning it is and how amazing it is. But if you'd like to know anything about what we're seeing here, let us know and we'll do our best to answer those questions for you. Many of these trees, of course, it would be wonderful to walk in amongst. Uh, we don't do bush walks here at the moment, and so this is probably about as close as we're going to get to them, which is great. And I'm hope looking forward especially and this is just me to seeing our first leopard from the air I think that will be very special so hopefully jean -Dre will manage to find one of those at some stage fairly soon and we'll tell him to get onto it uh, Michael you want to know how many people can fit into a balloon I think it's probably uh, eight or so uh, with jean -Dre and the camera I suspect it's quite possible that there are fewer guests than there would be otherwise And Dina, you want to know if we'll have a drive right from the balloon basket. Uh, we won't be, because I don't think we're going to be able to cut this into our normal safari live stream, because I think the balloon will land before the safari live stream begins for the normal game drive show. But certainly it will be at some stage cut into the, the sort of main show that we're doing. Ah, now, Betty, you want to know what the taller, lighter green trees are, sort of a sage green. I don't actually know. Uh, you know, those trees are very new to me. There are some sausage trees in there, some kigilias. There are many, many fig trees of various descriptions that run through those woodlands. But I'm not entirely sure exactly what the ones you're looking at now to say. I know exactly the ones you mean, but I'm not sure. So, Rita, you said you had 16 in your balloon. I don't think this balloon's quite as big, but it might be. And James Richard, you're wondering if there are species of mammals that will 
spend their times only or exclusively in those woodlands rather than out on the grasslands. Um, yeah, there probably are diker species that will spend their time exclusively in the woodlands and not out in the grasslands. Uh, I'm sure there are a number of bat species that would do the same. But in terms of the antelope, no, not really. Um, many will like the ecotone regions, for example the topi, they're like the ecotones which is the sort of fringes of the woodlands. There you get a wonderful impression of how the river bends back on itself and you can imagine the oxbow lakes that are going to be created over the next few thousand years if this river is allowed to continue and we don't take too much water out of it and cause its demise which I don't think we will uh, lorry driver, you say, do fig trees have fig nuts? Well, no, they have fig fruits with seeds in them. Um, not too many in the way of uh, nuts. And yes, absolutely, Brandon, you said it'd be amazing to see a crossing from the balloon. It most certainly would, and I suppose we will be able to do that at some stage. Oh, Mar Mary Miller Bubble? Mary Miller Bubble. You say they have seasons in the Mara. They do, but it's very, you know, we're very, very close to the equator, and so the climate is very consistent out here. You basically have two rainy seasons, though, so they don't really talk about things here in terms of spring, summer, autumn, and winter, but in terms of the long rains and the short rains, and therefore the long dry and the short dry. And we've just coming out of the long rain period, which turns these grasslands from pretty short grass plains into these sort of waving long grass um, hesitate to call them plains again but I suppose they are and we had the most spectacular afternoon yesterday with those lions that you were just watching now hunting in amongst the tall grass in broad daylight and so the long rains really do completely transform the landscape into and completely change of course the way the animals behave out here. Marco you say it is quite lovely, it is indeed quite lovely. And then Santiago Mendez, Zivon, you want to say we're going to be broadcasting from the Mara during Earth Live. Yes, absolutely we are. We are one of the feeds. I'm not sure how many, I don't think anyone knows exactly just yet how many feeds there are going to be for the Earth Live broadcast. And if you don't know what that is, it's going to be the biggest live wildlife broadcast in history, broadcast on National Geographic. Um, on the 9th of July, I think it's the 9th of July, and that's going to be coming from wildlife locations throughout the world. So it will include bears and bull sharks and uh, hopefully a couple of whales. And certainly, hopefully, we're desperately hoping that we'll have a live lion kill or certainly some live lion action that night. It will be night time here. We'll be broadcasting at, I think it's 3 o'clock Eastern African time. So you can work out whatever time that is where you are in the world. There are some impala, and they're having a little bit of a drink, and a graze. They'll have a little drink. Water. Impala, of course, massively water-dependent, and so they are one of the sedentary creatures that live around this area. There we have the balloon moving very gently south. There's hardly a breeze to speak of today. And there's an earland with a tiny baby earland. Oh, that's so special. That is the very largest antelope that we get here. And you see how the eland is herding protectively the little baby away. Now, in case you're just worried that this is a little bit insensitive, you know, it's obvious that the balloon is creating a little bit of fright, but the balloon pilot can do nothing. He cannot move that balloon. He cannot avoid what he's doing there. He's just floating with the wind. And make no mistake that Yelant baby will become completely comfortable with the balloon over the next few years or so. It's just going to take a little bit of time to get used to it. And you can see how the mum is shepherding it along. And there you can see the changes in the grasses. You can see how long they are and you can see the golden tops and the green below. Just going to zoom out from there. There we 
go, and still the sun is not quite, you know what, it's gone behind a bank of clouds. That's why this grassland isn't quite bathed in light just yet. Now that gives you an idea of the speed that they're moving, and as, of course, the air warms up a little bit, so the wind starts to become slightly more. Right, let's get back to our questions. That was fascinating, looking at those elant. Um, Laurel, you say the balloon make a noise. No, it doesn't make a noise at all, unless they're pulling the burners. So if the burners are going, then it makes a tremendous noise. And you can actually tell whether they're blowing the burners or not. They're probably doing it now, or they have just done it. You can see the balloon is rising. Um, you and Shield made new sound. I suddenly sound like I'm in a tin can. I'm sorry about that. It's because the, the studio is not yet fixed with its sound equipment. So don't worry. All of this is just testing. We're just trying to see what's going on. Marco, you say I sound like <laughs> C-3PO. Thank you very much, much Marco. That's very kind of you. Uh, all of you are rather worried about the sound that is coming from this, but I promise you it will change. Lucille, you want to know how high they are? I'd say with that picture that you're looking at now, I'd, um, not more than 50 meters or so above the ground. I think they probably go between 10 meters and 50 meters above the ground. So between 33 feet or so, all the way up to about almost 200 feet up. I mean, there they're quite high now. Uh, we are zooming into the river. You can see the river has moved away now from the direction of the wind. It's bent around towards the southeast. And these guys will be heading south-southwest, I think. I'm guessing, of course, because I can't see exactly where they are. Um, this is just beautiful stuff. And there is a little bit of shake, but that's to be expected. Jean-Dre is doing this for the very first time, hand-holding it. And all of this is a test to see how best to do this. Angie, you say you can hear the birds. Well, that's most impressive. Yes, there's one bird calling. It's a starling of some description calling next to me. And there's also now a small child walking past me, which is quite fun. Um, you can hear some, <laughs> some crunching on the floor. Um, <laughs> Jessica, you say hello, Stephanie. Yes, hello, Stephanie. Um, how exciting for Jean-Dre, indeed. And then you're wondering how the chase vehicle picks up the balloon. He follows it, basically. He's following the line of where it goes. They've got a vague idea, you know. They've been doing this for so many years that they've got a pretty good idea of where that balloon's going to land. I hope, for Jean-Dre's case, that nothing untoward or strange happens today. Uh, yes, indeed, a car is picking them up. So Peter Brandt, who is our technical director, he is currently driving along, uh, frantically make, trying to make sure that he is on a road that will take him to the place that Jean-Dre lands. Otherwise, Jean-Dre is going to be spending a rather long time there in the bush. He's not very upset about that, of course, because at the end of these balloons rides, there is a spectacular breakfast uh, thrown, <laughs> thrown about by the little governor's camp uh, people, and that's from where Jean-Dre took off today, from Little Governors, which is a camp up in the north of the Mara Triangle. And so Jean-Dre is quite keen to be left with the, the guests and the spectacular breakfast, so he's hoping Peter Brandt will get lost on his way to find him. And we'll hopefully see one or two more animals, but if not, we'll just sort of float gently over the plains and enjoy what is, I think, a magnificent view. And like I say, with any luck, we will have some sound from the balloon at once, some stage. Now that there that you can see is some an erosion gully. It's not caused by human interference, it's just natural erosion. And they call that, apparently in this area, a lager. I'm not sure why, but that's what it's called. Michael, you're wondering to know if we'll see the Marsh Pride at some stage. They have been spending most of their time up north of the Conservancy. And I believe that they are now on their way back and spending much more time around that marshy area where they were made so famous by the Big Cat Weeks. So yes, with any luck, we will have the Marsh Pride at some stage fairly soon. 
There we have Jamie's view of the balloon. It does look to me like it's quite a lot further off to, towards the... Where, what direction am I talking about? Towards the south than it is normally towards the south and the east. And so I hope they're going to find a place to land. Well, they're going to have to find a place to land, otherwise, well, I can't stay up there forever, can they? Now, as Linda has just pointed out, we're going to get 20, it's 20, 25 minutes time, we'll start the sunrise drive, which will probably start at Juma, but if they're still in the air, which I don't think they're going to be, well then we might start it from the air here. There we have a herd of animals, which is very exciting, and that looks like a herd of buffalo. Yes, indeed it is. A herd of buffalo lying in the grass, looking at again a Jandre, and they've seen this balloon countless times. It's just Jandre that is surprising to them on a morning like this. And as Drew Jones says, this is going to be epic during the migration. It certainly is. Imagine these planes covered in 2 million or 2.2 million animals. One and a half of those wildebeest and then the bulk, the rest of the bulk made up of zebra, and then there are Thompson's gazelles as well, and a whole lot of eland that move along with that vast swathe of animal life. And those grasslands now are already, I mean, they're still teeming with life now. It's hardly like they're uh, devoid of it. There are countless numbers of topi, and uh, we've seen Grants and Thompson's gazelles, we've seen hartebeest, we've seen buffalo, and we've seen many, many giraffe and elephant, we've seen the rhino, hippo grazing in the night, and of course the attendant lion prides, which have much smaller territories than they do down in South Africa, because, well, there's just quite a lot more of them, because there's so much more to eat, and that, of course despite the amazing amount that we're seeing at the moment, it's going to increase exponentially once the great herd arrives. Now, what has Jean-André spotted there? Well, I don't know what he spotted. He seems to have spotted a dark green bush and a termite mound in amongst the woodland. This is a sort of drainage ditch that will probably be a... Um, a tributary of the Mara River. Oh, there are elephants, apparently, says Kirsten. I can't see any elephants there. Anyway, that's absolutely fine. I'm sure they were there. <laughs> and Vera, you say you wonder if the buffalo will get annoyed when inundated by wildebeest and zebra. I imagine every single animal here that is not a migratory animal must be very, very irritated by the presence of two million extra mouths wandering through this area. So I think, but for the predators, everything else is probably profoundly relieved when they all go south again, somewhere around October. <laughs> yeah, in Santiago you say you can't believe how far you can see. Uh, and you want to know how far we travel during Safari Live. Well, Brent, during his sojourn last night, probably travelled about 50 kilometres from the camp. So, I mean, a large distance, 50 to 60 kilometres, actually. So we do get to travel an enormous, an enormous amount, uh, or an enormous distance. All of you are now shouting at me and telling me that we were looking at elephants. I'm sorry about that. Yes, obviously we were. I clearly am not paying enough uh, attention. Janine Rachal, you say, jean must find us a rhino. Janine, you've obviously just joined us. jean did find us a rhino already. He's, uh, he's very cleverly, in fact, I think it may have been the first animal he showed us. It was a black rhino in amongst the grassland, rather like the one you're looking at now. How 
Come on now, James Richard, you say you love the drone views that we get, but you think the balloon has an edge because it has a more peaceful floating feeling. It is different, isn't it? I mean, one aerial is not the same as the other. I, I like both. I think they're both great. But the wonder of this, of course, is that there is no choice as to where the pilot goes. He has absolutely no choice. So he's just got to float along. He can go up or down. He cannot go at all uh, sort of left or right. There is no mechanism by which he can do that and so that bring, or, or stop the balloon. And so that brings with it, I think, a really nice sort of flavour. We just see what we see. We can't track anything. We can't follow anything. We just have to float over the landscape and see in this random transect what we have, what it has to offer. And they're a small impala herd. That's probably about the average size of an impala herd for this area. And if you're used to our Sabi Sands broadcast, of course, you'll say, oh, that's a small impala herd. No, it's about average for this particular area. Tony, you want to know if there are any indigenous tribes in this area? Oh, you, absolutely, there are many. But the dominant tribe of the Maasai Mara is, unsurprisingly, the Maasai. And they will form into various clans, some of which uh, will not quite be warring. But, you know, there's always interesting conflict where any kind of clan um, or system exists. So that's what, you know, that's what the separation will be. But all of the people around this area, oh, there's a crocodile, are Maasai. There's a crocodile going into the river oh that's a wonderful way to see how they swim and we just do not get anything like that impression from looking at them anything but from above and you can see they swim with that sort of serpentine movement of the tail that tail is very powerful and used for the swimming and you can see we can't hang around with it we just have to move now and you can see the light also starting to change completely as the sun pops out from the cloud bank that is sort of hanging in the east there what else is Chandri going to find for us in amongst the woodlands <laughs> and Joanne, you say it's the best view ever of a croc. I have to agree with you. I think that was the best view that I've ever had of a crocodile. Because you can see them swim like that. <laughs> Looked like a buff doing the backstroke there, Pat. I don't think it was. Look, I missed an elephant just now, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't a buffalo doing a backstroke. They were hippo, apparently. Uh, thank you, Kirsten. There were definitely lots of hippo there. And Aaron, you say a view of a giraffe would be cool. Yes, it would, absolutely. Um, Krista, you say how far are the migration herds from your location now? It varies, you know. They, it's a misconception that the migration is a situation where, you know, all of the animals move in one line, come up into an area, do what they have to do, turn on and go back again. They come up in waves, sometimes in enormous waves, sometimes in drips and drabs, sometimes late, sometimes they come in and disappear again and then come back again. So it really is quite difficult to predict and quite difficult to follow. But we have had herds of the van or reports of the vanguard of the herd somewhere around the Sand River just to the south of Sala's camp, which is in the Masai Mara at the southern end. And so we think that they could possibly arrive in to this area that you're looking at right now uh, earlier than they did last year. I'm pretty sure that they're going to do that, uh, but we don't know for sure. And we th are more sure that they will be in the southern reaches of our traversing area earlier than they were last year. And our traversing area here, uh, well, I mean, in terms of square kilometers, is probably about, well, let me just do it in hectares for you. We're probably sitting at about 100,000 hectares of traversing at the moment, which is 1,000 square kilometers, which is therefore about 600 square miles of traversing, which is quite spectacular. Isn't that nice? 600 square miles of traversing. So when we say are the herds in our area, well, it depends, of course, which area we mean. So they will be in the southern reaches of that 600 square miles uh, long before they get up to where you're looking at now. You're looking at the northern parts, the very northern tip of our traversing area at the moment. 
Now, I think they're probably higher than 200 feet off the ground now. I think they're probably about 300 feet off the ground, I'm guessing. And just remember, um, Jean-Dre took off from Little Governor's Camp uh, with the services of Governor's Balloon Safaris. They do this every single day. And every it's a really comforting sight. I love it in the mornings when I look out, either if I'm in camp over the Mara or if I'm in the bush. I love watching those balloons take off. It is just the most romantic feel about it. And so if you ever come to the Mara, a little trip with Governor's Balloon Safaris, I think, would stand you in good stead. You say, Pat, you say fabulous camera work. It certainly was. Trisha, you say thank you for sharing. Well, I mean, it's not really me. Uh, it's uh, the quite astonishing technical and organizational ability of our directing team and, of course, the quiet and silent assassin, Alex the Russian Voz, who have managed to bring us this quite spectacular sight of the Mara. Now, what have we got there? Is that the request for giraffe? No. no those are wildebeest. They don't seem to be migrating anywhere, and I suspect they might be a very sad little group because they could possibly be part of the very small herd uh, that was chased and unfortunately uh, lost one of their youngsters to the Angama Pride last night or yesterday evening. Now, there are wildebeest in the area, not many. I'm told that about 30,000 spend the non-migration season, so between the months of October up to when the next migration arrives, which can be any time from now, and they spend their time north of where we are, north of our conservatory, about 30,000 of them. So they don't all migrate, but I mean most of them do. 30,000, a very small portion of the 1.5 million wildebeest or so that come up into the area. There you can see the balloon shadow, which I think jean is trying to indicate. Yes, he is. He's trying to see if he can see himself hanging precariously out of the basket. And there you get an impression of the vastness of the grasslands, of how few trees actually there are but far on the fringes of the river. We've gone to go back to a few colour bars there, so we'll cut back to Jamie and the Angama Pride, which are now enjoying the warmth afforded by the loveliness of the sun as it comes up. It probably gets to round about. How cold does it get here? I think we've probably had the coldest temperature yesterday, just before dawn, I would have said was about 14 degrees Celsius or so, which is about... 58 degrees Fahrenheit, so really not very cold at all. And I'm sorry about these color bars, but it just does happen from time to time. This is our very, very first balloon safari look at. And what you think you're finding is as, as the balloon starts to lose height, we are going to get uh, more and more of those color bars and a bit of break up and that sort of thing. So we'll just, Jamie is standing by there to show us those wonderful lions. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, I think we're probably going to pack this up now. Um, if you want to continue watching, just remember that the Safari, uh, the Safari Live mainstream will begin at wildsafarilive.com at 7.30 East Africa time or 6.30 Central African time. And Jamie will cut into that feed with these lions and so she'll tell you all about them and her wonderful experiences that she had uh, early morning with the brand new little cubs. Thank you very much for joining us on our very special first balloon safari over the Mara. Sorry for the technical glitches but that's just what happens. This was our first time. We will endeavour to improve and bring you more spectacular aerial shots from the balloon of the Mara very soon.